Good evening, everyone. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to today's session. Uh, it's a honor to have have you guys again in the room. All right. So, uh, uh, today's week's management class, right? Like I said. And I was expecting everybody to queue up for the class, right? Because what I'm going to say today, I will not say it again, but then I will keep on saying it because it's risk management. You need to survive in the forex market. Yeah. So welcome. Let's just pray. Fire heaven, thank you for today. Thank you for time again to study, to discuss, to share. We ask that you enlighten our minds, quicken us, help us be attentive. Pray that the network will be stable for us and we'll maximize this opportunity in jesus name amen all right so let's progress risk management right i hope you can see my screen can you see my screen can somebody respond can you just look at, see yes, the sir. chat yes sir. all right that's awesome okay we have some questions in the waiting room let me admit them is my chat still visible No, sir. We are seeing uh, compounding and position sizing. Oh, all right. Okay. Uh, how do I do this now? Because I need to show you on my chat. How oh, come my chat is not visible? It's showing now. Okay, my chat is showing now. Okay. Wow. Uh, I'm coming. Let me let me try and set up some things first. I'm coming. How is the view now? What I see? How is the view? What I see? The chat, sir. Just the chat. You're not seeing my edges, right? Yes, sir. the chat. Okay, just the chat. Oh. What's happening? Come on, come on. Okay. Uh... All right, all right, so let's progress. Let's see how we will be able to. Let's, let's my notes. Okay, all right, so risk management involves. So we are side making some definitions, so you can begin to take your notes. So risk management has to, it involves assessing and quantifying your financial risks involved in a trade. So risk management involves you assessing and quantifying. It is not just enough for you to assess what your financial risks will be in a trade, but you need to quantify what that risk is. So risk management involves assessing and quantifying the financial risks involved in a trade and then taking measures 
to control or reduce them. So beyond just the assessing and quantifying, you need to take measures to control or reduce your rigs. Okay. Can, can you see the PDF I'm looking at? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right, all right. So that is what is involved in risk management. So you, you see there that the idea of trading, like I say, is for you to make profit, right? But the profit is just like an addition now. The major thing you should be interested in is in developing that skill, having that skill. The moment you can have that skill, you can be able to make profit. And so when we talk about the three pillars on which Forex stands, and I mentioned your trading strategy and um, plan, I also mentioned risk management and um, trading psychology. So you observe that a lot of people emphasize a lot around trading strategy, plan, entries, exits, and so on. But we solely, we so much underrate risk management. Risk management is the most underrated trading skill. Risk management and trading psychology. Okay. And then risk management, I mean, we're talking about risk management in the context of Forex. But then also, risk management has to, it cuts across various walks of life and various affairs that you do, right? So in risk management, you need to assess and quantify the financial risks involved in the trade and then take measures to control them. So the three main approaches in your risk management, I'm going to be stating them. The first thing is that for risk management, you have a scenario where there's maximum risk for maximum profit. Okay, You see someone has $100 account and the person wants to, the person is ready to waste that $100 to make another $100. Now, remember I told us that one of the first rule of trading is that do not trade what you cannot afford to lose, right? In as much as your account size is hundred dollars, obviously this training and skill is so that you don't lose uh, the hundred dollar. But then, around the approaches for risk management, you have seen people who actually approach the market with maximum risk or maximum profit. Okay, and in that scenario, you see someone, right? taking a trade. So for a $100 account, let me cite an example, okay? For a $100 account, the person uses standard loss size of 1.00, okay? Now, let me explain in fact if I continue with my examples. Now, using a maximum risk to maximum profit scenario or risk management scenario, that trader is exposed to the financial risks of the market. And most times, traders who adopt that style do not use stop loss. This must be noted. Traders who adopt that style do not use stop loss. In short, any moment you trade or place a trade and you don't put a stop loss, you are falling your, you are putting yourself in this category of maximum risk for maximum profit. You are not using the stop loss, right? And then this kind of risk to reward or this particular class of traders, right? They trade using the maximum strength of their margin. So don't forget that your margin is like your amount, the account size that you have. I, I, I explained that when I was talking about, when I was teaching us on terminologies yesterday. Was it yesterday? Yes, yesterday. So you see them, they use the maximum strength of their margin. And obviously, particularly, the risk to reward ratio of this trading style is one is to one. So they are ready to risk $100 to make another $100 so that their account size will be 200 right? In the scenario where you see, I was, we talk about the place where you see them, they will risk $100 to make $50. That's number two, maximum risk for minimum profit. But here you are seeing them, they are risking maximally to gain maximally. 
that kind of trading star has a one-to-one -one risk to reward ratio one to one on the left hand side is risk on the right hand side is reward so you see them using a hundred dollar account and they are trading with 1.00 as lot size 1.00 is the standard loss size. What that means is this. If you place a trade with 1.00, if that particular trade moves one pip in your favor or against you, if it moves one pip in your favor and against you, you are going to either be making or losing $10. I'll repeat. Your account size is $100 and you're using maximum risk or maximum profit. Your trading style there will be one lot. One lot, which is 1.00. If that trade moves one pip, one pip in your favor or against you, you are going to be making or losing $10. Now, how many pips does that account size need to be crashed? Let me hear your reply. 10 pips. 10 pips, right. With just 10 pips against you, that account is gone. And if you are trading good, <laughs> sorry, like in one minute, <laughs> in one minute, you have gone to the village already to try that. So 10 pips against you, you are gone. Maximum risk for what? Maximum profits. This is not advisable. I may tell you around, I may suggest issues where you can try it, but then this is not advisable. The next class is to have maximum risk for minimum profit. In this case scenario, that trader thinks that a little profit from the market, the, later, the trader thinks of get, getting a little profit from the market when, while exposing a large fraction of his investment or capital to the financial risk. So you see the person exposing $100 of his capital, right? To just say he wants to get $50 or $100 to say, let's say he wants to get $20, right? In that scenario, you are having a maximum risk for a minimum profit. Most times, shooters who use this tend to use it when they predict the direction of the market. And they hope that the market will go eventually in that direction. In that kind of scenario, the risk to reward ratio here is a two to one. Remember, on the left hand side is your risk, on the right hand side is your reward. So when I say two to one, it means your risk is what? Two to one, two ratio one. So you are risking, let's say, a hundred dollar, or let's say you are risking $50. Okay, let me cite the first example. Your account size is hundred dollars. You're risking hundred dollars to get fifty dollars, or you're risking fifty dollars from your hundred dollars to get twenty-five dollars, right? So you are risking more for minimum profit. Now, this obviously is not advisable. When I, by the time I get to the third point, and I will not re-explain, you understand why I said it's not advisable. Okay, so you see. Traders risking $200 or $300 in order to gain $100, right? Now, the next category of risk management is the minimum risk for maximum profit. Minimum risk for maximum profit. Now, this is most advisable. Minimum risk for maximum profit. This is how a, discipl a disciplined trader should trade. So you are exposing your capital to less risks in the financial market for more reward, right? Now, in this scenario, obviously in the first and second scenario, that trader does not use a stop loss. But in this third scenario, which is the most advisable scenario, the trader has to adopt the method of using a very tight stop loss. Okay, stop loss that will help you control. Remember, when I defined risk management, I said in risk management, you are assessing and you are quantifying your financial risk. You are quantifying 
the risks involved in that particular trade. And then you take measures to control or reduce that risk, right? So for the minimum risk to maximum profit, you have to adopt a type stop loss. So here, you are seeing a risk to reward ratio of one is to two. You are seeing a risk to reward ratio of one is to three. Are we together? So you see a trader who has an account size of $100, And the person wants to make, let's say if you are risking your whole hundred dollars, the person wants to make two hundred dollars, or risking hundred dollars to make three hundred dollars. So your risk is hundred, your reward is two hundred. Your risk is hundred, your reward is three hundred. So it is advisable that at the very minimum you should have a risk to reward ratio of one is to two. One is to one happens in the market because the market um, volatility has to be factored. One is to two also happens. One is to three also happens, right? So now, why is this very important? I was going to say. Let's take, for example, your account size is, um, where's my, okay. Mm. Sorry, I have a board in my front, so. Pardon me, I'm right here because I'm teaching. Okay, so let's say your account size is $100, right? And you are having a minimum risk to, for maximum profit. And your risk to reward ratio is one is to three. What does that mean? If you have a... Uh, there's something I was supposed to mention. I was supposed to mention position sizing. Okay. Um, okay. Let me explain this, and then I'll, I'll explain position sizing together with it. Okay. So I talked about position sizing when I mentioned the first scenario of using one standard lot, one point zero zero, right? And I told you that if your account size is hundred dollar and you use a one point zero zero lot size, one pip will give you ten dollars. So if that trade goes against you in 10 pips, you have lost $100. If it goes in your favor in 10 pips, you have made $100. If anybody doing that with a $100 account size is having a maximum risk for a maximum profit, okay? Now, I want to explain minimum risk for maximum profit, minimum risk for maximum profit, and then talk about position sizing. So I believe you are taking notes, right? So imagine, or you can write down, imagine that your account size is $100, right? Imagine that your account size is $100 and you are using the lowest lot size, okay? So your position sizing is the lowest lot size, 0 0.01. That's the lowest lot size. 0 0.01 means that, 10, uh, 10 pips in your favor gives you $1. 10 pips in your favor gives you what? $1. 100 pips in your favor gives you $10. So, for a person using a hundred dollar account size, and the person is using the lowest loss side of 0 0.01, how many pips do you think we need to go against that trader for that trader to blow the account? You are following. How many pips? Hundred pips. So, uh, come, come again with the question. Now, I said your account size is hundred dollars. Okay, okay. Let me let me talk about position size. I guess because I've not explained position size, and that's why you're not able to understand it. Now, in position sizing, I think I should have a, a definition around it here. Okay, in position sizing. 
you are going to be position sizing is the determination of the amount of lots to be traded on a portfolio based based on the dollar value of the entire of the entire portfolio i'll explain that so in position sizing you are trying to determine the amount of lots you want to trade based on your account size based on the amount of dollars you have in that portfolio okay so whatever your account size is it should give you an information as to what you are trading in your positions right it should give you an information as to what kind of lot size or position you should place the amount of lots you should take all right now i told us that 1.0 is the standard lot size so using 1.00 one pip will give you 10 dollars 10 pips will give you 100 dollars now the next position size below 1.0 is 0 0.1. Okay. For 0 0.1, one pip is one dollar. I hope you are writing this thing. Though. One pip is one dollar. Ten pips is ten dollars using 0 0.1. As your position sizing, as a position size, rather. The next one lower to it is the lowest loss size, which is 0 0.01. Now, if I use 0 0.01, I said that 10 pips on the 0 0.01 will give you $1. So, 100 pips. On a 0 0.01 we give you ten dollars meanwhile a hundred pip in a 1.0 will give you how many dollars one thousand dollars a hundred pip in a 0 0.1 will give you hundred dollars so the 1.0 is standard lot 0 0.1 is medium lot 0 0.01 lowest lot size so in position sizing, you are going to be determining the amount of lots you want to trade based on your account size, based on your portfolio, based on the amount that is available to you. Now, let me tie it up and explain minimum risk for maximum profit, which is best advisable. So I come again with my question. Assuming your account size is $100, and you are using the lowest lot size, which is 0 0.01. How many pips do you need to crash that account? 1,000 pips. Correct. You need 1,000 pips against you to crash that account. Now, before a trade will give you 1,000 pips, it's going to take a while especially when you are trading only one pair. Remember, the more you have more positions open, the more your position sizing has increased, the more your risk has increased, obviously, the more your reward has increased. So, a person that has a $100 account using 0 0.01 has 1,000 pips to spare to survive in the market. Now, let us assume that this person is adopting a one to three risk to reward ratio, a minimum risk for a maximum profit. And the person is saying that he is going to take 10 trades. Now, for these 10 trades to close this person's account and to crash it, this the person needs to have a hundred pip stop loss for these ten trades to cancel out the no, not hundred pips. Yes, hundred pips, right? Hundred pips because you need one thousand pips to crash hundred dollar using zero point zero one. 
So it means for the person wanting to take 10 trades, the person needs 100 pip each on those 10 trades. So 100 times 10 gives you 1,000. 1,000 pips in total. Don't forget that the lot size here is 0 0.01, the lowest lot size. So if the person is using a one to three weeks to reward ratio, uh, okay, Zoom is already beeping us. I think I'll, before, they, before they cancel us out, I'll have explained this fact. So if the person is using a one to three weeks to reward ratio, it means therefore that for every one trade the person wants to take, if the person is ready to lose uh what did i say so if the person is ready to lose 100 pips which is your stop loss it means the person is ready to lose 10 dollars to get 30 dollars remember the risk to reward ratio is one is to three so let me come again the account size is 100 dollars the lot size is the lowest lot size 0.01 Using 0 0.01 to crash that account, you need 1,000 pips against you. Now, this person has, as a disciplined trader, because for you to come up with saying you want to trade 10, pip, 10 trades, that shows you are appreciating the level of discipline okay, that's involved in the market. So the person has decided to say, I'm going to take only 10 trades on this account. And for each of that trade, I'm ready to risk. 100 pips because 100 pips times 10 will give you 1000 pips, which will, which will crash the account. In terms of dollar value, 100 pips is $10 using 0 0.01. So if you have 100 pips being $10 and you need 10 trades, right? You need 10 times 10. So if one of your trades is 100 pips stop loss, and that will be $10 loss. You need to lose that trade for 10 times straight. So $10 times 10 gives you $100. Are we following? This math is not, should not be complicated. Are we following? Yes, sir. All right. Okay. So you discover here that using a risk to one to three weeks to reward ratio, the person is ready to lose $10 to get $30, which means the person is ready to risk 100 pips to get how many pips? 300 pips. Now, to get 300 pips uh, in a day, not as though it's not possible, but then a lot of factors have to be involved, right? But because when I talk to you about the average pip movement of a particular currency, you discover that in a day, the average pip movement of a particular currency is not up to $300. It's up to 300 pips, rather. So for you to achieve a 300 pip movement, you need to hold on to that trade for like three days, four days, if not up to a week to get that 300 pips. So you discover that already by saying what I'm, by, by paying attention to what I'm saying, this person will necessarily, this person is not a scalper, obviously. This person is not an interday trader. It could be an integrated that depends on the currency, but this person has a very strong footing on being a swing trader. So he's ready to hold this trade for like three days, four days, one week to ensure he gets 300 pips in his direction. And he's ready to accommodate 100 pips against his direction. Right? So you discover that a minimum risk for a maximum profit is the best way to trade in managing your risks. So this trader with a $100 account is ready to risk $10 for $30. Now, assuming this trader, remember that this trader said he's going to take 10 trades. So assuming this trader has seven trades, seven trades that were bad, and three trades that were good. It means that for every seven trade that is bad, for every one of them, you lost ten dollars. So it means he lost seventy dollars in total. 
for the three trades that were in his favor, for every one, he made how many dollars? $30. 30 times three is how many dollars? $90. $90. So what do you observe? The young man took 10 trades, but because his risk to reward ratio is good, even when he lost seven out of the 10, he was still profitable with how many dollars in profit? $20. So I see this person will survive the market. Even when with his 10 trades, he lost seven. I mean, that's already a 30% win, win ratio, right? And 30% is less than 50. Well, because his risk to reward ratio is awesome. His risk is well managed. And obviously, his entries and all of that are well coordinated. You discover that having a one to three risk to reward ratio, you can be able to overturn even your losses. Now, imagine if the inverse was the case. Imagine if he won seven trades and lost three. So losing three means that he lost $30 because for one of it is $10 is risky. And then winning seven means for each of it, he won how many dollars? $70. If you do the subtraction, what is remaining? $40, right? So he won $70, he lost Thirty dollars. If you do the subtraction, he has forty dollars. So his account balance will no longer be hundred dollars, but be one hundred and forty dollars. So you see, having a high reward to a lower risk is very good, which is why it's advisable that you have at least one to two, just in case. Because one to two, you can be able to buy your good and profitable trades. And your consistency overrun your losses by your consistency. Okay, I mean, in this area, we now talk about compounding, right? Where your profit from your capital, you add it to your initial investment so that there'll be more returns. Compounding is also a good way to manage your risks, but then it's also advisable that once if you are compounding and you have gotten to within 25 to 50% of your account size, you need to also withdraw, right? So let's say your account size is $100 and then you have been trading, you have been trading, you have been trading and then you have made up to like 125 or 130, right? At that point, it's nice that you also, you know, withdraw some money because most times if you leave it there without a proper risk management, you are going to lose that the profit you have made and you start losing it from your capital. Okay, so this is why having a minimum risk for a maximum profit is very important in managing your risk as a trader. All right, I hope that is clear. Now, let me explain this risk to reward ratio using the first scenario of a sorry, the second scenario of a maximum risk for a minimum profit. Uh, so we have less than one minute. I'll end this session now. And then by the time we resume, I'll send a link. We'll continue with our risk management class. Thank you.